All right. Hi, this is Mrs. Robertson, and today we are uh, doing Chapter 1, Lesson 6, Solving Proportional Relationships. We are going to skip the first page and go right on over to page 56. So this is Chapter 1, Lesson 6, page 56. Now, if you have your ebook, you can watch the little video that's a brain pop video. Uh, we watched it in class, so if you're not here today, go to your ebook and you have access to the brain pop video. All right, now it says write and solve proportions. All right, let's look at what this looks like in algebra. A proportion is an equation stating that two ratios or rates are equivalent. That means they're the same thing, okay, equal. Numbers, 6 over 8 equals 3 over 4. Okay, that's cool. You know they simplify each other. In algebra, we would say A over B equals C over D, where B and D cannot be 0. Now, let's look at what this has, this lesson has for us to learn about. Well, we're going straight to cross products. Okay, consider the following proportion. Sometimes kids are not as simple as 6 eighths equals 3 fourths. So, if you have A over B equals C over D, you can do what's called the cross product. You take B times C and A times D and they should equal each other. So you would write down A times D equals B times C. Okay? That's how it is in algebra. Probably a little cloudy. It's not making a lot of sense. Well, let's do it with numbers. The products A, D, and B, C are called the cross products because you cut across to get to these numbers. You cut across and you multiply. The cross products of any proportion are equal. Okay, so 8 times 3 will equal 6 times 4. All right, so... I don't like how they set this up like this. I would normally set it up like this. And kids, I want you to write this on your paper. Write down 8 times 3 equals 6 times 4. Okay, this is the way I like for it to be written. I don't really care for how they did that. And then 8 times 3 is 24. And 6 times 4 is 24. They equal each other. Okay, yes, Nathan? You know what? You are correct. Very observant on that. Now let's do some examples where we have an equation that's created by the cross products. All right? Let's look at example one. In two hours, the air temperature has risen seven degrees. Write and solve a proportion to find the amount of time it will take at this rate for the temperature to rise an additional 13 degrees. Now, this is what's important. Labels. Okay? They put temperature on top, so this is a temperature and that's a temperature. Got it? So all the temperatures are on top and they put the time on bottom. Time. Okay? So then you set up a proportion. You know that 7 over 2 equals 13 over T. Then you do the cross products. 7 times T equals 2 times 13. Okay, do you see that cross product? Then you solve your equation. You end up with 7 times t equals 26. Do you see how they got the 26? 2 times 13 is 26. 7 dot t, they, you write it as an algebra student like this. Then it's solve the equation. What will undo multiplying by 7? Dividing. And how do you show it in algebra? With the bar. And you end up with T equals 3.7. Any questions? Okay, now let's do A, B, and C. Yes. Because we have to undo multiplication. It says 7 times T equals 26. Well, to solve for T, you undo multiply, so you divide. Okay? It's a good question. Now, I want to show you how I expect you to do these problems. I don't want you to just write them down anyway. I, it's a very specific process that I want you to do. Don't do it just any old way. You got it? Like some of you yesterday, 
you just did what you wanted and it wasn't what I asked. So copy what I put down now. Four times nine, so put four, I use a parenthesis as opposed to a decimal, equals 10 times x. And you just put 10x. When a number is next to a variable, it means to multiply. Did I lose anyone on that step? Okay, now we're going to write down. 4 times 9 is 36. 36 equals 10 times x. Is everyone still with me? Mm -hmm. Now I have to solve for x. What will undo multiplying to 10? And we're going to draw the division bar, divide by 10, divide by 10. Now you end up with your x, which is what you wanted, and 36 divided by 10 is 3.6. When you divide by 10, you just move the decimal point over one place. Are there any questions on how your letter A should look? No. Okay, can we go on to letter B? Okay. Let's do this one. 34 times 5 equals 2 times Y. Now, kids, I could have done 2 times Y equals 34 times uh, 5. It doesn't matter which one is on which side. This could have been on this side and that on and th these two over here. Now, 34 times 5 is 170 equals 2 times y. Everyone's still with me? Now divide. Some of you aren't writing this down, kids. When I give notes, I really like it. When you write the same time I do, I just stop and pause for you to get caught up. Now, 170 divided by 2 is... Uh, 85. Now, on these problems, I will let you use a calculator if you need to, all right? You can use a calculator, but you can't just write down 85 equals y. You have to show all of these steps, okay? If you show all of these steps, you can use a calculator. Understand? Good. Let's do letter C. 3 times n now this is one, you really wouldn't have to do it because 3 is a factor of 21, right? This is one, I, you could say, well, 3 times 7 is 21, 7 times 7 is 49. When they're perfect ones like this, you could do that, okay? Well, this is a normal, this is just like your old-fashioned simplifying problems, okay? So that equals 49. Yeah, that works. But I want to make sure we understand cross products. But this is one, it's like, when they're so easy, why should I make you do this? So um, that's one I will let you just keep it that way, okay? Now let's go on to number two. This is where we use the word problems. Proportions and word problems really complement each other. It makes your word problems much easier to do. Let's look at number two. If the ratio of type O to non-type O donors at a blood drive was 37 to 43, how many donors would be type O out of 300 donors? Okay, yes, when you have word problems, you have to label. Now kids, just so you know, if you put total donors on top and type O donors on the bottom, you still get the same answer at the end. It won't make a difference as long as you are consistent, okay? So this person decided to put type O donors on top, total donors on the bottom, okay? So now, write a proportion. Let T represent the number of type O donors. So you have 37 over 80, they added them both together to get total, equals T over 300. Do you see how they got that information? Okay, now it's cross product time. 80 times T equals 37 times 300. I probably would have had this over here and that this over there, but that's okay. 37 times 300 is 11,100 equals 80 times T divide by 80. 
with your calculator you get 138 and 75 hundredths equals T. Any questions? All right, let's do letter D. The ratio of 7th grade students to 8th grade students in a soccer league is 17 to 23. Yes. .75 for this, 138.75. In your calculator, if you have 11,100, and you'll get to use a calculator, 11,100 divided by 80, you get 138.75. Good question. Yes. Yeah. If it's an emergency that passes over there. All right, so back to this problem. If there are 200 students in all, that's a total. So right now it's like in all is like a total. How many are in the seventh grade? What do we want? What are we comparing? Seventh grade and total. How many are in the seventh grade? All right, so now let's set it up. I'm going to go set it up over here. So I'm going to have... On this problem, 7th grade, I'll put 7th grade on top, and total students on the bottom. Okay? So we're going to have a proportion. Alright, so how many are in 7th grade? 17. And if I take 17 plus 23, that gives me my total of 7th grade and 8th grade. So 17 plus 23 is what? 40. Now in this school there are 200 students. Now so, T is our missing number. Solve that problem. Hello this is Mrs. Robertson. I do. He's already been to the media center. You're welcome. Goodbye. False alarm. No one needs to go anywhere. Okay. Do you see what I just did there? Okay. We want to know how many 7th graders in the total population. Now we are going to cross multiply and divide. The next step, 17 times 200 equals 40 times T. If you use your calculator, I'll get calculators out for those that don't have one. 17 times 200 is 3,400 equals 40 times T. Okay? Now, the next thing, we're going to divide both sides by 40. Divide by 40, divide by 40. And you get 85. 85 equals the total number of 7th grade students. Alright, so how many are in the 7th grade? 85. Okay, 85. And that makes sense because there, there are fewer 7th graders than 8th graders. Well, out of 200 kids, that looks about right. Fewer 7th graders than 8th graders. Question? Yes? What was that? Um, you could have, but I wanted you to know how to solve proportions, okay? Um, so that's why, since we're solving with a proportion like this, I wanted you to do all the steps. It's not like, oh, how can I do it the quickest way? We are learning how to use our algebraic steps, okay? So did everyone write these down, even though you saw another way to do it? Okay. I didn't care which one you put. When the phone rang, I just quickly thought, I'll use a T. I didn't know what variable I was going to use. It just popped in my brain then. So, yeah, you could use any variable. All right, now let's go to use a unit rate. <coughs> you can also use the unit rate to write an equation expressing the relationship between two proportional quantities. Olivia bought six containers of yogurt for $7.68. Write an equation. Relating the cost C to the number of yogurts Y. How much would Olivia pay for 10 yogurts at this same rate? 
All right, what does this look like? It says, find the unit rate between the cost and the containers of yogurt. Cost in dollars, containers in yogurt. All right, so you just divide it by six. It's $1.28 for one container. So the cost is $1.28 times the number of containers of yogurt. How many containers of yogurt? Well, they set this up C equals $1.28 times Y. That would work for all of the, doesn't matter how many yogurts you would have. So here they tell you, you have 10 yogurts, you replace Y with 10, $1.28 times 10 equals $12.80 for your answer. All right. On page 58, example 4. JC bought 8 gallons of gas for $31.12. Write an equation relating the cost C to the number of gallons G of gas. Here they're telling you which variables to use. How much would JC pay for 11 gallons at the same rate? So first you find the unit rate. How much is it for one gallon? Well, $31.12 divided by 8 equals $3.89 for one gallon. Now, our equation, cost equals unit rate times gallons. Okay? Now, once you, so that's your little equation there. So, you know, they forgot their C there. How many gallons are you getting? 11. So you take this times 11 and your cost, C, equals $42.79. Make sure you put the, vari <coughs> the variable C <coughs> in the problem. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Somebody's sick. No, I have a dry throat and there's something stuck. I had a, a, a like this bar for lunch. Hmm. You okay? Yeah, it's just sort of stuck in my throat this little grainy feeling nothing major but I'll I think I got it washed down now so let's do letter E Olivia type two pages in 15 minutes write an equation relating the number of minutes M to the number of pages P typed and how long will it take her to type 10 pages at this rate so here we have to find our unit rate all right so to find our unit rate Um, on the problem, they want to know how long will it take her to type 10 pages at this rate. All right. So you're going to end up with 0.5. Um, so we have 15 minutes for two pages. How long will it take it for one page? Well, 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. Okay, any questions on that? So that's your unit rate, 7.5 minutes for one page. Now, our equation, they want us to do, it says write an equation relating the number of minutes M to the number of pages P typed. So you're going to have M equals 7.5 times P. That's your equation. It says you have to write an equation. There's the equation. Now we're going to replace P with 10 because how many pages is she doing? 10. So M equals 7.5 times 10. And 10 times 7.5 is 75. M equals 75. Now, I know you kids can do some of these things in your head. It's not about how fast you can get it. It's how you communicate it. This is like writing your paragraph in language arts. If you just wrote words all over the paper, you wouldn't get a good grade, would you? No. You, have to, you are now learning how to communicate in an advanced math course correctly. You can't just write your numbers all over the page. You line up your equal signs and you balance your equations. Do you understand what we're trying to teach you to do here? I'm teaching you the language of mathematics, all right? Yes, it's a wonderful, beautiful thing. Um, but 
sometimes you'd rather just write your answer down. So let's go on and practice doing these uh, problems mathematically in the math language in the guided practice. Um, in this one, um, I know that you know that 7 uh, times 8 is 56, so 32 divided by 8 is 4. K equals 4. All right, we know that. But let's do it so that let's practice with this problem on how to solve our steps. Are we ready? Let's do cross products. 7 times 32 equals K times 56. Now, I didn't have to put my parentheses around there, okay? Now, 7 times 32 will give you the answer of 224 equals K times 56. All right, everyone have that written down? Yeah. Now we have to get K by itself. We're going to divide both sides by 56. And 224 divided by 56 gives you the answer of 4. 4 equals K. Now, yes, we did that in our head earlier, right? But uh, you have to practice, and it's easier to practice with easy problems like this than to do the harder problems later, all right? Now, let's go on to the next one. Okay. This one you can say, oh, all you do is divide, or multiply. 9 times 4 is 36, so 3.2 times 4 would give you your answer. Yes, but I want you to show it using the algebraic steps. So let's practice cross products again. 9 times n equals 3.2 times 36. Everyone understands that part? Yeah. So then you have 9 times n equals 3.2 times 36, 115.2. What's the next step? Divide by 9. Divide by 9. And then you get N equals 115.2 divided by 9 gives you 12.8. And the answer is 12 and 8 tenths. And if you took 3.2 times 4, yeah, you get 12 and 8 tenths. Any questions? Okay, let's do the next one. You're going to have x times 5. The proper way of writing it is 5x. Even though it's x times 5, um, you always put the number in front of the variable. If you write x5, I don't count it wrong, though. 41 times 2, because you're all little rookies at this. Then you have 5 times x equals 82. Then you divide both sides by 5. Line up your equal sign. X equals and 82 divided by 5 is 16.4. Any questions on that? Okay, now let's go to number 4. You're going to see how setting up a proportion on a word problem makes word problems easier. Trina earns $28.50 tutoring for 3 hours. Write an equation relating her earnings M to the number of hours H she tutors. Okay, so we're going to do, we have to find our unit rate first of all. So if I have $28.50 over 3, that equals what over 1? Well, $28.50 divided by 3 gives you 9.5. So it's 9.5 for one hour. So they get paid um, $9.50 for one hour. Okay? That's the unit rate. Unit rate. Now we're going to write the equation. Assuming the situation is proportional, how much would Tina earn tutoring for two hours and for 4.5 hours? So for this problem, um, our equation will be M equals 9.5 times H. That's the equation. It says write an equation. Check. That's my equation. Now you replace it with the 2, the hours with the 2, and with 4.5. So here 
m equals 9.5 times 2. And for the other one, you have m equals 9.5 times 4.5. Okay, and 9.5 times 2 is uh, what, 19? Mm -hmm. $19. And 9.5 times uh, 4.5 will give you $42.75. All right, any questions? No. Okay, so what do I want you to practice? Kids, I want you to show cross products on all of these problems. So on page 59, you're going to do all. And yes, you are going to show cross products. Even if it's really easy, I want you to practice cross products. Okay? In 4, 5, it says write and solve by using a proportion. Okay? A proportion is going to be cross products for 4 and 5. In 6, 7, and 8, it says assume the situations are proportional. Use the unit rate to write an equation. So on 6 and 7 and 8, you have to find the unit rate just like we did in problem number four and in example four. And then you do an equation and then you solve. So these have three parts. You find the unit rate, write an equation, and then you solve it. Okay? Any questions? And let's see, is there a house problem on the other page? I think, ooh. If you get finished early, for those that like a challenge, 12, 13, and 14. Try to do those problems. Now, we've not, I've not taught you how to do uh, multiplying uh, like uh, with an equation like 2 times x plus 5. We'll talk more about that, but I'll show you how to do at least one of those problems tomorrow. All right, so let's get going on your work, homework. We'll do page 59. Show all of your steps. You may use a calculator, but you have to show your steps, okay? Yes. Yes. Here are the answers to problems 1, 2, 3, and 4. If you're not in my class today, I'm making this video. Make sure you show all of your steps. Show all of your steps in this problem.